Hi there, this is Solid Chironin from Solid Chironin Films and welcome to another Backlog Cleared video. Today I have cleared my Kino Lorber Blu-ray Backlog. Kino Lorber is a US company that sadly doesn't ship to the UK because um, they do have really good sales on. Um, but it's probably a good thing because if they did I would probably go crazy. Um, I do have a few Kino Lorbers that I've picked up from various places. Um, the releases as far as extras are hit and miss. Some releases will have no extras at all. Other releases will have commentaries and featurettes and stuff like that. Um, they do have an interesting mix of films. They have kind of cult films. They have a lot of film noirs. Um, they have westerns um, they do have some um, kind of older films some box sets of older films I mean it is a label that I'll continue to pick up but for the time being um, I have cleared my backlog again um, you can let me know what your favourite titles are or um, which Kino Lorber titles that I don't have that I should pick up. There is a few so I won't spend too much time over each title um, unless I do. So let's just start at the beginning. This is All I Desire which is a Barbara Stanwyck um, Douglas Sirk collaboration. There is another one. Um, this has an audio commentary. This is a a fun little film about an actress who has pretty much almost been turned into a showgirl and she goes back to her small town it's set in the 1910s she abandoned her children um, for a chance to live her dream which hasn't really worked out but the people in the town think she's this successful wonderful actress which isn't quite um, the full story, she goes back, some of her children idolise her, some of her children um, despise her for leaving, um, obviously her husband, um, played by Richard Carlson, is fairly cold to her, but there's a, a lover she had in town who's a little bit um, aggressive to having her back. Um, it's not an amazing film, but it is um, actually entertaining as the lies are built upon lies um, and eventually the truth comes out um, with mixed results. Obviously one of her daughter wants to go back to New York with her to see how she lives as a successful actress and she wants to be an actress. Um, so it boils up quite nicely as melodramas usually do. Um, next is Alps by Yorgos Lanthimos. Um, most of the Kino Lorbers have black spines but some of them don't. Um, so some of the more recent ones kind of stand out as far as spines are concerned. Um, this is for me his early um, masterpiece. It's the one after Dogtooth which kind of got all the kind of acclaim and kind of put them on the map. Um, I prefer Alps. It is an absolute um, masterpiece. Watching it for the third time. Um, this one has a commentary um, by Amy Simmons, who's very good. Um, this is about four people, two men and two women, who replace the dead in families replace loved ones. Um, as usual with Lanthimos, he doesn't actually tell you what's going on until about the second half of the film. Um, it's deliberately obtuse, it's absurd. 
as if you're familiar with Lantham Moss, you would expect. Um, again, his talent is showing you odd behaviour or absurd behaviour, but it's actually shining a light on what we would call normal behaviour, the relationship between others, between family members. You know, these people need to essentially play as other people to lift their own existence. Um, again, it's another challenging Lantham also where he doesn't tell you what's really going on. Um, you just have to be hooked in and you find out eventually what's going on. Um, starring his usual collaborators. Um, it's absolutely wonderful and it's great that it's got a Blu-ray release. Next is Avanti by Billy Wilder. A late Billy Wilder in 1972 starring Jack Lemmon. Um, it's a bit bloated at 140 minutes. There's a lot of fun to be had but again it should have been shorter. Um, Jack Lemmon does actually get naked in this film if you if you're that way inclined. Um, it's a good Wilder but it's certainly not up to the standard of Masterpiece Wilder. Next we have Barquero which is a fun little western with Lee Van Cleef and Warren Oates. I mean getting Lee Van Cleef and Warren Oates together I mean come on you can't you can't do much better than that can you? Um, this is about a battle for to get from one side of the river to another. Um, again, this is an example of Aquino Lorber with absolutely no extras whatsoever. Um, but the film is a lot of fun. 115 minutes, it's probably too long. But you get 115 minutes of Lee Van Cleef and Warren Oates. So that's, that's something to be celebrated. Next is Bend of the River, one of the Anthony Mann James Stewart films, also with Arthur Kennedy and Rock Hudson, um, and Blazing Technicolor. Um, again, this is a lovely print, and this one um, has a commentary and a, a trailer on it. It's not my favourite man, Stewart, but it's still very, very good. I would highly recommend it. Um, next, it's Kino Lorber. Um, but it's one of the redemption titles. It still kind of counts as a Kino Lorber. Um, Blood Beast Terror with Peter Cushing. This one I actually thought wasn't as good as I thought it could have been. Um, but it's still a fun little uh, film. Again, this only has a trailer and a picture gallery. Bluebeard's Eighth Wife by Ernst Lubitsch. This is a wonderful Lubitsch Corker. Um, bizarrely starring Gary Cooper. We're not really used to Gary Cooper doing comedy, but he did a few in the early days. He's still a little stiff, um, but he's actually pretty good in this. Um, 1938, this one's got a commentary by Cat Ellinger, who of course is always good value. Um, and also co-stars Claudette Colbert. It's a lot of fun. Um, if you haven't seen it, I would recommend Bluebeard's Eighth Wife, especially if you're uh, a fan of Lubitsch. And let's be honest, who isn't a fan of Lubitsch? Um, next is Burnt Offerings, which I believe is also available in Arrow. Um, this is a weird little haunted house um, film with... Oliver Reed and Burgess Meredith and Lee Montgomery and Betty Davis even turns up. And this is a bizarre example of, you know, a loaded Kino Lorber. I mean, this has an interview with actor Anthony James, an interview with the screenwriter, an interview with Lee Montgomery, and two commentaries. There's a trailer from Hell release. I mean, I don't know whether that's pretty much similar to what's on the Arrow release. Um, 
Yeah, an interesting film, not great. Good, but not great. Um, next, um, you might have heard of these if you're familiar to the channel. Um, it's the Carol Lombard Collection. Um, one, I think I've done random reviews of these, or films from these. So this is Fast and Loose, um, Man of the World, and No Man of Her Own, which are all wonderful. So No Man of Her Own is Clark Gable, Man of the World is William Powell, who she was married to at one point, and Fast and Loose with Miriam Hopkins and Frank Morgan. Also, she was married to Clark Gable um, later on, and sadly at the time of her death she was married to Clark Gable. So that's collection number one. And there's collection number two. So this has Hands Across the Table, Love Before Breakfast and The Princess Comes Across. Again, I think I've done random reviews of these films, not that I'm mad for Carol Lombard or anything. So that's Hands Across the Cable, <coughs> Hands Across the Table, Hands Across the Cable is a completely different film. That's with Fred McMurray, The Princess Comes Across, which I did a random review of with Fred McMurray, and Love Before Breakfast, which has Cesar Romero, um, and it's always good to see Cesar Romero um, playing a normal character and not um, a crazy psychopath in makeup. So that's Carl Lombard Collection 2. Um, hopefully there'll be a Collection 3 as well and 4. Next is James Woods in Cop. One of James Woods' best 80s um, sleazy characters. Um, he plays a sleazy cop. This one has a commentary by the director, James B. Harris. It's got a nice cast, Lizanne Warren, um, Charles Durning. It's got a wonderful ending. Um, it's far from perfect, but James Woods, the sheer force of his performance um, and the ending make it well worth your time. Um, Cotton Comes to Harlem, one of my favourite black exploitation films of all time. Um, the two wonderful cops, um, Gravedigger Jones and Coffin Ed. Absolutely wonderful. Uh, again, sadly, there's no extras in this one. Um, directed by the wonderful Ozzie Davis um, and also starring the wonderful Calvin Lockhart. It's an absolute blast and I would highly recommend Cotton Comes to Harlem. Next, it's Deep Rising. Again, some of the Kino Lorbers come with a slip cover. Um, this is the 20 year anniversary edition. So this one has an absolute stack of extras. Um, it's a commentary by director Stephen Summers, interviews with actors, interviews with the second unit director, interviews with FFX, F VFX people, interview with the uh, SFX makeup people, um, yeah, a bunch of extras, so much fun, um, it's the Poseidon adventure but with tentacle monsters, it's completely daft and silly, um, but way better than the mummy films. Next is John Berman's The Emerald Forest from 1985. Again, sadly, this has no extras. I would have loved a John Berman commentary because John Berman commentaries are amongst the best commentaries out there. Again, I just love commentaries where directors are self-depreciatory um, and they kind of tell you how they did stuff and, you know, rather than just, oh, look at me, I'm brilliant. Um, those commentaries aren't very interesting at all. So sadly, this doesn't have a John Berman commentary. Um, it looks beautiful. In 1985, it's actually about the disappearing Amazon rainforest. Um, and this is now 2021. So I'm sure that's all sorted and cleared up and we've stopped doing the deforestation of the Amazon. I'm sure we've done that. Um, 
Great performance by Powers Booth. Um, Meg Foster and her very strange eyes um, is in this as his wife. Um, they lose their son um, to a tribe. Um, it's parts, it's parts wonderful, parts a little silly and naive. But even Berman, not at his best, um, is still pretty wonderful. Next, we have figures in a landscape with Joseph Losey. Again, another release with absolutely no extras whatsoever. Um, this is Robert Shaw and Malcolm McDowell. This is a strange little film. Again, probably way too long at 110 minutes. It's literally two guys running across a country and being hunted. Nothing's explained. And it's their relationship as they bicker and fight between each other. Um, as they're trying to escape to another country. Again, not much is explained. An interesting film, but again, for me, could have been tighter. Um, but it's another fascinating Joseph Losey film. Next is Finders Keepers by Richard Lester. Again, another release with no special features on it whatsoever. Um, this is from 1984. This is so underrated. There's moments of comic genius on it. Um, it's pretty much a chase for $5 million, which is hidden in a coffin. Um, there's Michael O'Keefe, Beverly Angelo, Pamela Stevenson, Ed Lauter, Brian Dennehy. Um, it's a very early appearance by Jim Carrey. Um, it's so much fun. Is it perfect? No. But it's an absolute blast and there are moments of comic genius in it. Um, next is Hangover Square. Um, this is a personal favourite directed by John Bram who made some really interesting little films in the 40s. Starring the amazing George Sanders and the amazing Laird Krieger who again is one of Hollywood's great tragic stories of how he died so early because he's a phenomenal, phenomenal actor. Um, this one has two commentaries um, and The Tragic Mask, the Laird Krieger story. I would um, recommend this to the hilt. This one even has the radio version with Vincent Price. Um, it's just so good about a, a composer who has blackouts um, and murders happen during the blackouts. It's absolutely wonderful. You'll come for George Sanders and then you'll be blown away by Laird Krieger. One of the Kino Lorbers that I would highly recommend people go get. Um, next it's another John Berman. This is Hell in the Pacific with the almighty Toshiro Mifun and the um, almighty Lee Marvin. This one does have a an interview um, with John Berman, sadly not a commentary, an interview with art director and a commentary um, by Travis Crawford and Bill Ackerman, who are film historians. This one's absolutely wonderful, um, about two war veterans who are dumped in an island um, and obviously fight each other and then have to work together. It's, it's a beautiful film, not a lot of dialogue, but you don't need it. Um, it's another John Boorman essential. Next is How I Won the War. This was one of the first region A's that I bought. Obviously BFI have since released this Richard Lester film on region B Blu-ray. Um, this is one of my favourite films of all time. I've been Loving this for years, even if it was on terrible DVDs that were really dark and impenetrable. The print on this is now nice and clean, you can actually see what's going on. Um, unfortunately this only has um, two trailers from Hell episodes for other Richard Lester films. So sadly there's not a lot of extras on this. The BFI extras aren't brilliant either, but... Um, they are better than this. 
just one of the greatest war films of all time. Completely absurd, but it still has lots of wonderful points to make. Michael Crawford gives a wonderful performance as um, a doofus, basically, who's in charge. Michael Horton is wonderful. Roy Kinnear. Um, there's obviously John Lennon is wonderful in it as well. Um, they get a mission to build a cricket pitch behind enemy lines for um, troop morale. It's just a wonderful satire. Um, it's pretty bleak. It's brutal in places. Um, but it's good to see it's getting kind of a bit more credit nowadays thanks to the BFI release and this release as well. Um, it is getting a bit more exposure because it deserves it. Because it's a masterwork. Um, next is Arma La Douche um, by Billy Wilder. Also, this is on Eureka Massa Cinema as well, which I wasn't going to get because I read this, and then I went, oh, well, it's Billy Wilder. So this has two audio commentaries, one by Joseph McBride, another one by Kat Ellinger. Again, it's another one. This is 63. It's another one that is too long. It's 143 minutes. But it's still a lot of fun. Um, set in Paris. Um, it was a stage play. Um, before it was made into a film by Wilder. Again, it's not Wilder at his best, um, but there's still a lot of pleasures to be had from it. Um, next is a wonderful film noir, I Wake Up Screaming, with Betty Grable, Victor Mature, um, and Laird Krieger, who's not actually listed on this, but Laird Krieger as the obsessive cop, just walks away with the whole film. Um, this was directed by H. Bruce Humberstone. Um, for all you um, H. Bruce Humberstone fans out there. It's a weird film. There's flashbacks within flashbacks within flashbacks. This one has a commentary by Eddie Muller, the film noir. Um, who again, if you're not familiar with his name, you'll recognise his face because he's on a bunch of extras across boutique labels and he's very good. Um, there's an alternate opening. Um, an animated image gallery, this deleted scene, and some ad campaigns. Absolutely wonderful, dark, obsessional, um, and an amazing Laird Krieger performance. And Victor Mature is actually very good. Sometimes Victor Mature is not the greatest, but he's good and I wake up screaming. Next, I Walk Alone. Burt Lancaster, Elizabeth Scott, and Kurt Douglas. I mean, come on, can't ask for much more than that. Directed by Byron Haskin. This one has a commentary by Troy Howarth. Again, Troy Howarth's a regular um, for those familiar with physical media and boutique labels. This is a great little noir. Uh, I think I did a random review on this one as well. Um, Kurt, uh, Kurt Douglas. Burt Lancaster comes out of prison um, wanting to get money from Kurt Douglas, who was his partner, but Kurt Douglas has now become a businessman. Um, and Bart Lancaster struggles to understand, you know, he doesn't have all this loose cash kind of lying about because he's now in business. Um, it's a wonderful little film, again, 1947. Great little noir. Next, Michael Mann's Jericho Mile. Um, originally made for TV. Um, this one has a commentary by Lee Gambin. Again, not... Michael Mann at the top of his game or anything, but it's still a wonderful film with lots of uh, Michael Mann touches, starring Peter Strauss. Um, it's just a wonderful little film about a guy in prison who likes to run. Next, Judgment at Nuremberg. Um, the whopping 186 minute star studied cast. Um, pretty impressive, but again, kind of dry as I tend to find um, all Stanley Kramer films, but well worth seeing, well worth having. Um, Montgomery Clift's is wonderful in it, um, and William Shatner. It's quite startling when you realise William Shatner's in it. Um, 
Obviously, Max Miller and Shell got the Oscar. Um, Spencer Tracy, Burt Lancaster, Richard Widmark, Marlena Dietrich. Um, Judy Garland turns up. Um, really good. I wouldn't say it's a masterpiece or anything, but well worth your time. Next, it's another Richard Lester classic that doesn't get talked about enough. That's Juggernaut. It's Richard Harris and Omar Sharif and David Hemmings and Anthony Hopkins and Ian Holm and Roy Kinnear. You know, it's another typical Richard Lester um, oh yeah, I'll just cast everybody in the film. Again, on the surface, it's just like, oh yeah, somebody's planted bombs on a, an ocean liner and under the hands of in the hands of somebody else, it would probably just be pretty naff. But Richard Lester knows just when to you know, rack up the tension. Um, great performances by everybody involved, and it's just a wonderful film. The kind of film you watch on a Sunday afternoon. Um, but another example of why Richard Lester's so underrated um, and also so good. Next is Yorgos Lanthalos' debut, Kineta, which is so good to actually see on Blu-ray. Um, I should say, I think I did say at the start, these are all region A's, um, so you'll need multi-region capabilities. Um, again, this is a commentary of Amy Simmons, who did the commentary on Alps. And this is about three characters who recreate crimes and murders. But again, you would have to figure that out when you watch it, because again, Lanthimos doesn't tell you anything, just drops you in it, and you have to figure it out what the hell's going on yourself. Again, it's another wonderful examination of human behaviour and isolation and routine and trying to recreate the past in some way giving you something to live for in the future. Another wonderful Lanthimos um, and again proving why he's one of the best directors working at the moment. Next is The Lodger. Again this is another one that I would recommend extremely highly. It's another Bram. This is 1944 starring George Sanders and Lear Krieger. In my opinion arguably the best um, Jack the Ripper film. Laird Krieger is absolutely amazing. It looks beautiful. Again you'll come for George Sanders but you'll get blown away by Laird Krieger. This has two commentaries. It has the making of The Lodger. Again, it has the radio show performed by Vincent Price. Um, and it also has a restoration comparison. The Lodger and Hangover Square and I Wake Up Screaming, I would all recommend um, for Laird Krieger because he's amazing in them. Next is Made for Each Other. Another Carol Lombard, this time with James Stewart. This is 1939. And this is it's weird because it does start off as a kind of screwball comedy, but then it quickly gets into a pretty grim film very quickly as a couple who are struggling for money and then they have a kid and then the kid gets ill. Um, it's really dark. It gets dark pretty um not quickly, but it does get dark, um, and some people might be a little put off by the kind of change in tone, but it's a wonderful film. Um, this one's got an audio commentary by Lee Gambin. Yeah, I'd highly recommend this one too. Again, Lombard, who kind of started off doing bikini pictures, and then obviously screwball comedies, and then she was just kind of getting into more kind of dramatic roles um, before she tragically died. Um, it's, again, she's one of those what if, you know, what if she'd went and did another 30 years worth of films. Next is A Man Alone, directed and starring Ray Milland. Again, this is a perfect Kino Lorber title. I'd never heard of it before. Um, again, I love Ray Milland. 
and like I said, he directed this one. This one also stars Raymond Burr um, and Lee Van Cleef. And it's just wonderful. I think I did a random review of this as well some time ago. Again, this has got a commentary, uh, but that's all it's got. But it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful little western, Raymond. Um, next is Miracle Mile. Again, this one's got an, an Arrow release, um, Region B, I believe. Um, again, this is a strange little film um, set in LA and World War Three breaks out. Starring Anthony Edwards and um, Marie Winningham. This one has two commentaries, um, deleted scenes, outtakes, bloopers, a supporting cast and crew reunion. There's an in a new interview with Anthony Edwards and uh, Mayor Winningham. And there's alternate ending. You know, so there's a bunch of extras on this release. Again, I don't know whether they're the same as the Arrow ones. Um, next, Mr. Destiny, or It's a Wonderful Life, if you're James Belushi and Michael Caine. Um, this is one of those guilty pleasure films. It's objectively, it's okay, but I just have a soft spot ever since I saw it on VHS. This is from 1990. And um, this has got a commentary um, by James Belushi and director James Orr. I'm not really familiar with James Orr's output. Um, again, it's just James Belushi wishing he'd hit a baseball at a high school game and that would have changed his life. And he meets Michael Caine, who's a very strange taxi driver, um, who gives him a drink. A purple bubbling drink that he seems to just take. That's fine. And then he goes back home and it turns out he lives in a mansion and he's got a beautiful wife and he's the boss and it's it's daft fun. Next is the Night Stalker Cole track and I'm very excited because Keno Lorber have announced they're going to release the series on Blu-ray which I will be picking up at some point. So this one's got a commentary and um, an interview with the director um, John Loyal and Moxie an interview with a composer, and um, there's a featurette on Dan Curtis who created um, Kolchak. Um, I love Kolchak. This is the one um, with what seems to be a vampire in Vegas. And then we have The Night Strangler, which is set in Seattle. Bizarrely, this one has a slipcover. I think the other one had a slipcover, but I just didn't get a copy again because I have to get it on secondary places. Um, then it was slipcover. This is made a year later. It's a 4K restoration as well. This is a commentary with Tim Lucas, an interview with the composer again, um, a feature on directing The Night Strangler. Again, this is a cool story. This is um, somebody seems to be every 80 odd years, I think it is. Um, sorry, every 21 years seems to appear in Seattle, <coughs> excuse me, and kill what, five people and then disappears for 21 years, drains their blood. It's awesome and I'm excited about the series coming to Kino Lobber Blu-ray. Next is No Orcas for Miss Blandish, which is available on Indicator which has a ton of extras and I would recommend the Indicate release. This one has no extras, but because I love the film so much, I double dipped and actually got this after I had the Indicator. I know it makes no sense. Um, this is such a great film. I would highly recommend it. It's So it's an American film noir, but it was written by an English guy who had never been to America. So he wrote the book and um, so it's what his idea of American gangsters would be. So the dialogue is really strange. It's also, there's a lot of English uh, cast members. So it's this, it's the English idea of what American gangsters would be. So it's just off. It's just a little bit strange, but that's just what makes it wonderful. Um, Robert Aldridge did The Grissom Gang which is based on the same novel um, 
which I don't believe I've actually seen. Um, but this is just such a strange little film, but I would highly recommend the Indicator release rather than this one, because like I said, this one has no extras whatsoever. Um, but I just love the film, so I double dip because I'm strange that way. Um, next, what do you know? It's another Carol Lombard. It's Nothing Sacred with Frederick March, which always had, like, I think I had DV two DVD versions which the prints were just terrible. Um, but this is a 2K um, scan. It is in colour. Um, currently it's at 1937 colour. This one's got a commentary um, by William Wellman Jr. Because it was directed by William Wellman. This is the one where um, Frederick March plays a newspaper um, reporter and Carol Lombard is dying from radium poisoning, um, even though she's not really. So the paper offers her a trip to New York before she dies. Um, it's wonderful. It's a Carol Lombard, you can see. Next is Panic in Year Zero. Um, which again is another apocalyptic film. I think I did a a double take video with this um, and Medical Mile, I think. That was a long time ago. Um, this one has Joe Dante talking about Panic in Year Zero and there's a commentary by film historian Richard Harlan Smith. Um, again, this was directed by Ray Milland. Again, I'd never heard of it before I um, picked this up and realised that's another Kino Lorber gem, as far as I'm concerned, from 1962. Next is Pitfall, which is another wonderful noir. This is Dick Powell and Elizabeth Scott. Again with Raymond Burr, who plays a wonderful um, heavy in this. This is directed by Andre de Toth. Um, again, another wonderful noir. Next is Planet of the Vampires by Mario Bava. This is amazing. Um, obviously Bava is more f known for kind of horror. This one has a commentary uh, by Tim Lucas, who's a Bava biographer, as Joe Dante in a Trailers from Hell episode. Um, you will perhaps notice some um, similarities with Alien. Um, this was made in 1965. In stunning colour, Bava. I mean, you will have a colour overload. Um, it is an amazing film. Um, yes, it's low budget, but the ideas in the film are wonderful, and the execution of the film is wonderful. And Bava just goes um, up to eleven on the colour and just the imagination. Next is the Queen of Spades which is a wonderful film with Anton Walbrook from 1949. Um, that's all you really need to know. Anton Walbrook's in it. Um, a commentary by Nick Pinkerton. There's an introduction by Scorsese. There's an analysis um, by film critic author Philip Horn. There's a 1951 interview with Thoreau Dickinson, who directed the film. Um, and there's a 1968 screening int introduction by Thoreau Dickinson and a trailer. So again, it's kind of an example of how Kino Lorber sometimes there is no extras and other times it's a release will be stacked with extras. Um, set in the 19th century, um, it's about gambling, it's about the ace with Queen of Spades. Um, it's just wonderful, it looks absolutely gorgeous. Um, and Anton Walbrook, that's all you'd say. Some different Rawhead Rawhead Rex um, based on the Clive Barker um, book. This one is stacked with extras. Again, I think this is available Scream Factory maybe. And um, this has got a commentary of the director, um, George Pavlo, moderated by Stephen Thrower, of course, did Fulci books and all that. 
There's an interview with actors, with SFX people, with the cameraman. Um, there is actually a booklet. Yeah, so bizarrely some of the Kino Lorbras do have booklets. Some of them do have reversible artwork. It is just kind of a a mixed bag. There's no kind of rhyme or reason really for some of the releases as far as what you actually get. Um, but there's an essay by Kat Ellinger. It's a fun, daft um, film. Again, a lot of Clive Barker adaptations, you kind of know that it's not really the full vision. But it's, it's fun. Next is The Silent Partner, which again is a film that I did a, a random review of a while ago. It's a really strange, odd little film starring Christopher Plummer and Elliot Gould and um, Susanna York about a bank robbery um, with a difference. Um, you can go watch the random review if you like. Directed by Daryl Duke. Filmed in Canada. It's, got a, it's really odd, really strange. Um, I'm not going to go into the plot and spoil stuff because you really need to see it blind. Um, but it's a really good film and again a really good Kino Lorber release, sorry I did actually say what was on it um, there's an interview with Elliot Gould which is excellent there's a commentary as well a radio spot and a trailer and we have Solar Babies which was one I believe I did pick up in a kind of chop lot 1985 um, it's starring Richard Jordan and Jamie Gertz, remember when Jamie Gertz was big? Jason Patrick, Lucas Haas, Charles Durning, music by um, Maurice Shar, um, no extras on it whatsoever, set in the future where kids rollerblade a lot. It's a complete um, mess, but it's, it's kind of fun. Next, oh, surprise, surprise, it's another Carol Lombard. Um, this is Supernatural from 1933. It's only 64 minutes long, but I'd highly recommend it. Again, I did a random review. It seems like I do random reviews in every single Carl Lombard film I've got, but that's not the case, honest. Um, this is a commentary by Tim Lucas. It's a 2K master, and it's just awesome. Again, it's only 64 minutes, um, but it's, it's well worth your time. That 64 minutes is well spent. Next is Taking Care of Business, or Filofax, as it was also known, sang James Belushi and Charles Grodin, um, the wonderful Charles Grodin, who died recently, um, from 1990. Again, it's essentially trading places. Um, Charles Grodin loses his Filofax, and James Belushi finds it, and then starts impersonating Charles Grodin. Um, again, it's just daft fun, but it's fun. Another VHS from 1990 that I rented and it's been in my life ever since. Uh, next, one of the seminal 70s films, The Taking a Pell in 123. Just amazing. Uh, Walter Matter, Robert Shaw, come on. Um, Martin Balsam, one of the greatest endings of all time, directed by Joseph Sargent. This one's got a really good um, interview with Hector Alonso or Elizondo even, um, an interview with the composer David Shire, interview with the editor and an audio commentary um, with actor filmmaker Pat Healy and film programmer historian Jim Healy. They might be related. Trailers from Hell with Josh Olsen. It's just, everybody knows the Taken a Pill in 1, 2, 3. Do not watch the remake because it's absolutely terrible. Um, but this is quintessential 70s. If you're making a quintessential 70s list, um, taking a Pell 1, 2, 3 would definitely be on it. Next, it's that second Stanwyck um, Cirque collaboration from the 50s. This is There Al There's Always Tomorrow, which the title doesn't really have much to do with what it's actually about. Um, Fred McMurray is married to Joan Bennett. They have three kids who kind of dominate their life and he's kind of fed up and then 
um, Barbara Stanwyck comes into his life, who used to work with him, but left abruptly. And then he dreams of, you know, getting away, um, escaping his life with Barbara Stanwyck. Um, but then, you know, some of the kids are kind of suspicious that there's something going on. Um, it's all about trying to escape your life. And it's like, yeah, but it's the life that you chose. Um, nobody forced you to get married. Nobody forced you to have three kids. So it's like, I don't really have much sympathy for characters like Fred McMurray's character. It's like, well, you chose that life. Um, and yes, you're fed up with it and you don't get enough attention. And it's like, what did you think was going to happen? Um, but it's a good film. Um, I wouldn't go ape crazy in all fours for it, but it's it's a good film. And Stanwyck is wonderful as well. Um, and Fred McMurray, with you know, you see his films with Carol Lombard, obviously in the apartment he's playing um, a bit of a scumbag. Um, yeah, the more you kind of see Fred McMurray, you kind of have your idea of Fred McMurray. Um, but a lot of these films kind of make you broaden your horizon a little bit on Fred McMurray. Um, next is Sybil Danning and they're playing with fire. That's a little bit different. Um, this one has an interview with Sybil Danning. This is a weird film as well from 1984. It's kind of part kind of sex comedy, part slasher, part giallo. Um, it doesn't kind of work, but Sybil Danning um, is a force. We'll call her that. Um, and it is some daft fun, but it's the fact that it tries to be like three different genres at the one time and it doesn't quite work. Um, next, it's another John Bram little gem, The Undying Monster. Don't worry, Lair Krieger's not in this one. I'm not going to go on about Lair Krieger again. Um, this has a nice featurette, Concerto Macabre on the films of John Bram, which I would highly recommend. There's a commentary. Yeah, there's four people in that commentary. There's a 2007 restoration comparison, trailers. Again, this is 42, 1942. This is only 63 minutes, but he packs so much into those 63 minutes that it puts people who make two hour films, puts them to shame. Um, it's a wonderful little um, creature feature, strangely enough, because they're an undying monster. Just a wonderful little film and a perfect example of economy is sometimes the best thing. Next is The Wild Heart. <clears throat> it's the Powell and Pressburger, but really what we're interested in is Gone to Earth. So The Wild Heart was the David Selznick butchered version. <coughs> Excuse me. Of Gone to Earth from 1952. Gone to Earth is an amazing film, but it's not on Blu ray, but it's on Blu ray here. So it's an extra, but it's really the main film. Um, because The Wild Heart, like I said, is the butchered version, um, which is 86 minutes, whereas, Wild, whereas Gone to Earth, the original 1950 version, um, it's an extra 20 minutes or so and it's obviously the much better film again it's another great performance by David Farrar Cyril Cusack's wonderful in it um, set in 1897 Jennifer Jones is a bit miscast but again she was Selznick's girlfriend or wife at the time so that's why she was cast yeah it's a perfect example of buying a release strictly for the extra because the extra is the proper film not the wild heart so i would highly recommend it um because it is at the moment the only blu-ray version of gone to earth there is and again gone to earth is in 1080 so it's not like one of those that you get where the other version of the film is just in standard definition gone to earth is in high definition as well so if you're a Powell and pressburger fan that's a must pick up if you're multi-region or region -y. and finally we got there in the end um, Witness to Murder it's Stanwyck and George Sanders I mean come on 
um, directed, written and directed by Chester Erskine. Sadly, absolutely no extras on it, which is a bit unfortunate. Again, this is a really economic 83 minutes from 1954. Um, Barbara Stanwyck sees George Sanders off somebody. That's not spoilers. That is witness to murder after all. Um, and the kind of cat and mouse game that then ensues. Um, obviously, it's kind of similar to Rear Window. Um which was released after Witness to Murder. It was like a couple of months after. Um, so Hitchcock actually ripped off Witness to Murder. Just to upset Hitchcock fans. So that's that's my Kino Lorber backlog cleared. Um, I mean, there's no way I will never buy another Kino Lorber um, because I do love the releases, even though at times, you know, the extras, well, sometimes they're non-existent. But a lot of the times the film is just so unique and special and different that you actually are just happy with the film. For example, getting those early Lanthimos on Blu-ray is just wonderful. And all those strange little film noirs and odd westerns. Um, they do have some gems. It's just a shame, that, like I said, they don't ship outside North America. Um, but then again, if they did, I would probably be bankrupt. So thanks very much for watching again. Let me know what your favourite Kino Lorber release is um, and what Kino Lorber releases I should really pick up. And hopefully you'll join me again as I continue to trundle through my backlog. We're getting there very slowly. So thanks very much for watching. This is Solitary Ronan from Solitary Ronan Films saying farewell. <laughs>